Welcome back to In the Footsteps of Isabella Bird. Well, in the previous uh, episode, um, you heard a rather breathless account of the Victorian readings uh, between the lines of uh, this story. You know, you could, and you could imagine the uh, uh, Victorian book clubs in Britain, because they, they, they read voraciously, uh, these people, because uh, they didn't have television for a start. And so they would have book clubs and someone would read uh, out. It was a <coughs> form of entertainment. And you can imagine that um, uh, they would choose uh, Isabella Bird's books as a rather prim and proper introduction to the exotic East. And then as they were reading these books, they would roll their eyes and go, ooh, uh, when, whenever they mentioned someone like Captain Hayward. Anyway, she's still with Captain Hayward and she's arrived now at Seremban where she meets Captain, what's his name? Captain Murray. That's right, it's a naval officer who's been given the rather dubious job of being the resident of Sungai Uja. And a British resident uh, was supposedly there to advise on um, modern administrative practices, let's put it that way, Whereas, uh, and, and leave all the sort of traditional stuff to the um, traditional ruler of the place. And, uh, and the traditional ruler was, um, well, he was obliged to follow the advice of the resident. But of course, traditional rulers say one thing, and their minions do not necessarily go along with them entirely. I mean, it, 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 it's, uh, so putting things into practice is, is, a, is another matter. They may say one thing, but anyway, poor old Captain Murray's main ally here was Dato Klana. Uh, Dato Klana was ostensibly the uh, uh, ruler of Seremban and uh, Sungai Ujong. Um, but Dato Klana now was on his way to the Hajj, and what was left behind was Dato Banda. Now Dato Banda had mm, just a couple of years beforehand uh, been aiding a, a, a character who we will come across uh, big time soon, uh, called Raja Mahdi. Raja Mahdi had, uh, well, he, he sort of grouped his armed forces around uh, Dato Klana's uh, place uh, before they went off to totally burned down uh, KL and, um, well, slit the throats of a considerable number of uh, British-led mercenaries and uh, put the, their officers' heads upon the wall of the fort in Klang. Naturally, uh, this man um, was a bit of a thorn in the side for poor old Captain Murray. Now, in, when uh, Isabella met Captain Murray, uh, she found him a rather blunt sort of character and she thought he was a decent fine upstanding man of course but um, perhaps not the most diplomatic of persons to be in such a uh, difficult position. Uh, so uh, poor old Captain Murray so sound, he sounded a little bit depressed. He said he was never happy um, and we'll explain a little bit later on now why he was never happy. Um, his, uh, uh, his residency, um, well, the roads around the residency in modern Seremban, uh, one of them, uh, where the residency was, one of the roads uh, lived to, it's called Channa Road or Channa Channa. And Captain Channa was uh, the first British uh, VC, uh, uh, the first Britishman, British officer to receive a f VC in, uh, in Malaya. And uh, leading, and the road that's cap, uh, that Chana Road leads into is Jalan Siaman Gagap. And Siaman Gagap was the commanding officer of the Malay forces that uh, not so long before this story uh, begins, uh, had laid siege to uh, poor old Captain Murray um, in the residency. So we'll talk about that in the next blog uh, about the Battle of Bukit Putus. But in the meantime, well, Isabella sort of unloads the girls uh, to amuse poor old Captain Murray, who's, like I said, uh, 
rather depressed and blunt speaking character and she goes off uh, with uh, Captain Hayward who takes her to see the sights of Sarandam. Sights um, they go to our um, well the opium dens and gambling halls uh, it's, it's all rather exciting. She, she said about, um, this is quite interesting, uh, she said about Captain Hayward, he has a reserve of quiet strength I should like to see fully drawn upon. Ooh, uh. So you can imagine all the uh, young ladies uh, in the Victorian book clubs um, going ooh, mm, and uh, rolling their eyes, looking at each other. I wonder what she meant by that. Anyway, she seems to have had a good old time uh, being escorted around by Captain Hayward, and he takes her off to see Dato Bandar, the Captain Murray's arch enemy, really. Uh, this is the man that makes uh, Captain Murray's uh, whiskers twitch considerably. And she was shocked, I tell you, shocked to the core when she met Dato Bandar. You know, this is the most powerful local chieftain in Saranban and uh, she was ex I don't know what she was expecting uh, as, as usual uh, she seems to have expected everybody to be dressed up and in their all their oriental splendor but um, no uh, he greeted her in a in a, an old sarong and a check shirt and she seemed to be most horrified by the fact that it was a check shirt goodness so he, he wasn't dressed properly at all but no nonetheless uh, he offered her champagne apparently um, he kept lots of champagne to entertain Western guests. Uh, she did turn it down this time. Um, I, I suspect she'd had a, a f much too much um, warm champagne in the past uh, and so thought, oh God, I'm not going to risk this anymore. Uh, anyway, she found him to be a kind of oily, sycophantic, wily oriental, you know. She she was uh, uh, putting him into this, this sort of category. She did not like him at all. And she thought, in comparison to Captain Miserable Murray, with his rather blunt, staccato way of speaking and being rather reserved and and slightly um, unhinged, I think is the correct word. Uh, he was thirty-eight, was Captain Murray, and he was. It sounds like he was suffering from a bit of PTSD, if not a lot of PTSD. I, I'll, going to that in the next uh, blog. Uh, you know, he, he was not a man that was, um, well, they didn't really talk about their mental health status. So his admitting to her that he was never happy uh, was perhaps as about as candid as uh, he would ever get with anyone. Anyway, what else uh, shall I tell you about? Uh, well, apart from the fact that I think you should uh, go down to the website now and read all this because it's spelt out much more clearly than I can do now and, and the last blog was a very very long long one so uh, what I think is uh, now it's time to uh, like share and subscribe I'm going to put to this side there like share and subscribe and uh, uh, read up on all this uh, and the next blog I shall explain to you mm, how the battle of Bucket Putus uh, unraveled and left our poor old Captain Murray in a rather uh, twitchy state. So, that's it. <laughs>